a timeline of the Rohingya crisis and persecution. The Rohingya have already been ejected from Arkan from long before. They are still fighting against repeated cycles of violence and persecution, which has long been an unreported catastrophe. Today, we'll take a quick look at the persecution and crisis affecting the Rohingya people over the years. The Kingdom of Arkan, which is now part of modern-day Burma, was conquered by the Burmese king Bodapeya in the year 1784. Britain periodically invaded Burma throughout 1824 and 1886, waging three wars as a result. From 1886 to 1942, Burma was a British colony after first becoming a province of British-ruled India. During World War II, Japan occupied British-controlled Burma from 1942 to 1945. Different sides of this are backed by Burmese citizens. Members of the Rohingya fight alongside the British and many Rakhine Buddhists side with the Japanese. Tens of thousands of Rohingya were forced to flee towards Bangladesh. In 1945, Burmese General Aung San and other local leaders fought alongside the British, defeating the Japanese. Then, in January 1947, General Aung San signs an agreement with the British that guarantees Burma's full independence within a year. General Aung San was elected the leader of the transitional government, where the Rohingya were also elected as members of Burma's governing body, the Constituent Assembly. In the same year, in July, political rivals assassinated General Aung San and six cabinet ministers. Finally, in 1948, Burma became an independent republic. The new parliament passes the Union Citizenship Act. It recognizes all citizens as equal. This includes the Rohingya and other minority groups as well. In 1949, Burma set up its first form of national identification. The government begins issuing registration cards to all citizens, including the Rohingya. From 1951 to 1960, Burma held three general elections. All citizens had the right to vote, including the Rohingya. Voters elected several Rohingya as members of parliament. Independent Burma could not breathe for a longer time and in 1962, the Burmese military led by General Ni Nguyen overthrew the elected government and established military rule in which they stripped away the Rohingya's citizenship rights. Burma's military-run government enacts a new constitution by establishing one-party rule in 1974. Later this year, Parliament passes the Emergency Immigration Act. The law limits the rights of individuals seen as foreigners from Bangladesh, China, and India. Authorities began confiscating Rohingya's national registration cards. In the year 1978, Rohingya refugees were again forced to flee from Burma into Bangladesh in August. In the same year, Burmese authorities launched Operation Nagamin, or Dragon King, to register and verify the status of citizens and people viewed as foreigners, in which Burmese soldiers assaulted and terrorized the Rohingya from all sides. Officially, in 1982, the military government limited Rohingya citizenship. To do so, Parliament passed a new law which bases citizenship on ethnicity. The law excludes the Rohingya and other minority communities. In 1988, 
pro-democracy protests flourished throughout Burma, including in Arkan State. This led to a brutal crackdown by the military across the country. Then, in 1989, the military government required everyone to apply for new identification cards called Citizenship Scrutiny Cards, and Rohingya never received those new cards. Targeted violence against the Rohingya started in 1990 and continued till 1994 in one or the other forms, forcing Rohingya to flee towards the border of Bangladesh to seek refuge. In 1994, the government started to deny Rohingya children their deserved birth certificates. Then in 1995, the government issued Rohingya a new form of identification known as a temporary registration card or white card. It does not serve as proof of citizenship. In 2008, the government revised Burma's constitution without input from minority groups or civil society leaders. This paves the way for democratic reforms but also guarantees continued military rule. In 2010, the military-backed political party won Burma's first national elections held since 1968. It appointed General Fei Sei as president. The opposition party, the National League for Democracy, boycotts. Burma held local elections in some areas in April 2012. Aung San Suu Kyi's area elects her as their member of parliament. In June and October 2012, new waves of anti-Rohingya violence started in Arkan. The Burmese government state-sponsored violence against the Rohingya erupted, with Rakhines joining the Burmese military in killing hundreds of Rohingya and torching tens of thousands of Rohingya homes. Following the persecution from 2012 to 2014, tens of thousands of Rohingya were forced to flee Burma via boat to neighboring countries. In April 2014, a national census was conducted for the first time in 30 years in which the government excluded the Rohingya. Then in March 2015, the military government invalidated Rohingya white cards, which were their only existing form of identification. The Rohingya are required to obtain national verification cards. These cards forcefully identified Rohingya as immigrants from Bangladesh. Burma holds national elections in November 2015 but Rohingya are not allowed to vote or run for political office. The National League for Democracy wins in a landslide. Then in April 2016, Aung San Suu Kyi became state councillor, where she was the de facto head of the Burmese government. In September 2016, the Burmese government appointed an advisory commission led by former United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan to look at the situation between Buddhists and the Rohingya in Arkan State. The following year, the commission made 88 recommendations to improve the situation. In October 2016, the Burmese military launched a clearance operation, killing people, raping women, and destroying Rohingya villages throughout northern Arkan. The violence forced roughly 86,000 Rohingya to flee to Bangladesh. In March 2017, the United Nations Human Rights Council established an independent international fact-finding mission to investigate human rights abuses in Burma and the Burmese government, as usual, refused to cooperate. 
In August 2017, Burmese soldiers destroyed several hundred Rohingya villages, and more than 700,000 Rohingya fled to Bangladesh. More than 9,000 Rohingya are estimated to have been killed during the violence. From 2018 to 2019, the United Nations Human Rights Council issued results from its fact-finding mission, which referred to genocide and crimes against humanity in Burma. In 2018, a global pro bono law firm and the Public International Law and Policy Group conducted an investigation into the 2017 assault on the Rohingya. It finds reasonable grounds to believe that crimes against humanity, genocide and war crimes were committed against the Rohingya. In 2019, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees estimates that more than 914,000 Rohingya are living in refugee camps around Cox's Bazar in Bangladesh. From 2019 to 2020, Gambia brings a case against Burma before the International Court of Justice, asserting that Burma violated its obligations under the Genocide Convention. It may take many years before the court reaches a final decision. In January 2020, the court issued a preliminary ruling, which included ordering Burma to prevent future acts of genocide. The case at the ICJ still continues in 2022, and Rohingya might need to wait another few decades to get any effective ruling that might guarantee Rohingya's rights and deliver justice to the victims and their families.